I don't know if you know that, but fast recharge is harmful for electric cars. Their batteries just aren't born for that type of recharge, and they need a slow restore. For now, at least, because technology is always developing and they are already working on it. Uh, say, I say they because I don't know what this kind of people is called, you know, the bunch of people that works with cables and coils and whatever. I don't know. They, what are they? they? They can't just be engineers. They're like engine genius. You know, they, they are from another planet. Because my abilities in technology are so small, so little, that sometimes when I'm where I'm preparing my breakfast, I just put a metal knife in the toaster when the bread is stuck, to unstuck it. But that's killer, you know? You could die for that, so don't try that at home. So I could die for just having breakfast. <laughs> anyway, technology is so fast that it's time that can keep up with it, not vice versa. It goes so fast that sometimes I wonder, like, what if humans could be fast recharged one day? You could think, well, that's why we sleep, okay? But we have to admit that sleeping is not an actual recharge. I wake up every morning, I feel way more tired than the night before. I don't know if that's usual for you too, or it's maybe on my shitty pillow, I don't know, maybe I should just change that. Anyway, of course, I'm not talking about sleeping. I'm talking about recharge stations for humans. Just think about it, okay? You're walking around your city. Hmm? You're thinking about something, anything. Maybe you're thinking that you have a shitty pillow too, that you should change that. And you feel devastated like this, completely devastated. You are like this, you're smiling, but you feel like this. But you already said yes to that meeting you don't want to attend at all. But your co-worker called, like, Melissa or whatever, is already there. Uh, she sit because she has that inner energy that makes her go like, every time she sees you around in the office and she walks this way every time. You don't know how that's possible, but it is. And you love her. Of course you do. She's a nice girl. Uh, but... You have to admit that you can deal with her only if you are fully recharged. So you go to your power station, you put inside your Euro coin, and boop, you're ready to go. Or again, just think about this. Um, you have just broken up with the love of your life. You know that kind of feeling, right? It's awful, it's terrible. You don't have the energy to do anything. So you go to your power station and you get the energy to do the things you want to do. Of course, you're not happy. You just take the energy. Because these are situations in which we feel wrecked or in need of energy because they sip our energy, which we need, by the way, in order to live, to do things, to do things we love. And we don't produce it. We have to take it somewhere. I'll tell you this. Anyone has a power station, or more, or a lot of power stations. They already exist. It's not in the future. For someone, that kind of energy comes from family. For others, a power station is a friend, or the job, the sea, books, Sex, love, jogging, you're lying. No one can find happiness in jogging. <laughs> no, I can assure you that someone does. Me, I couldn't find any. For a lot of years, I felt like I had just broken up with the dearest love of my life. Even in situations I was experiencing with a girl I loved, I was unloaded, switched off, and was like nothing could really hit me. I was kind of broken, that's what I thought. Because I recharged, and then I leaked happiness. It lasted like 
two minutes, I was like, okay, what the hell is going on here? It's not possible. <laughs> then I found out that my entire life was the shitty pillow I was so uncomfortable over. That's why I always felt so tired. And the problem was in the power generator. That was the defective one. If that doesn't work, no power station can work properly. You can have energy at all. So I fixed it. Not working with cables and coils, because as I said, I'm not good at it, could die. I fix it by starting a gender transition. I am a trans guy. You could say, oh, wow, I could try a gender transition on my broken TV too. Yeah, that, yeah, that, that wouldn't work, can I assure you. It's only human test for now. I was not in the right body for me. That's it. That was the small little problem with myself. And if you don't have that fixed, I can promise you, you won't fit in anything else. But gender transition, for me at least, is not happiness itself. It's not a goal or a finish line. It's a journey, like any life of you people, in which you and I can try to find our way of being happy. Transitioning doesn't mean you made it. It just means that from now on, you can make it. Because only when you suit in your body, you can try to find your place in the world. For some people, this is difficult to understand, and that, that's okay, but that's difficult to understand because it's so much more taken for granted, you know? Because they don't even have to think about their identity. You just are, okay? Your identity is so attached to you that you sometimes can even feel it. Just think about your name, for example. It's just a word, but that's so important. It's really important. It, it what describes you. You tell, tell it to people when you introduce yourself. It's the first thing. So it's what makes you real. Think about it. Just what would you be without your name? You would be a body, an entity. Mine was wrong. <laughs> so I felt like I had nothing left. Because if you feel bad in your house, you can move out. If you feel bad in your marriage, you can move out. It's not that easy, but you can. Uh, but what if you feel bad in yourself? What if you feel bad in your name? What would you do? Especially here in Italy, it's difficult to change that because you are asked to stand on your hands, walk on your hands by speaking Japanese in reverse. Then you can change it. It's a, it's a very long journey to change your name. And in the meanwhile, you feel trapped. I felt trapped. This is important to understand, even if it's difficult, because it explains why we transgender people don't choose to be this way, of course. We don't choose to have our power generator broken. Who would do that? You must be crazy to do that. The only thing we choose is to fix it. So once I started fixing it, my power stations started to work for the first time. They switched on like many little lights. That was so powerful, so intense, that really was, because for the first time, I could find happiness. My family, my friends, in my love, in what I did in university, even in jogging. No, I hate it, I still hate it. And, and what about you? Do you feel like your power generator is working at its best? Do you feel like you are enjoying all your possible happiness? Because you don't have to be transgender to have energy issues, of course, and you don't have to be transgender to fix it. It's all about what you want from yourself and to take it. 
The only thing that matters is what you think you are, what you think is right for you. No one can say you that you should be other things, different things. You have to understand what you want from yourself because why would you just be at your 70% when you can have the 100%? So it's difficult, of course. It's difficult to fix it because First, you have to understand what is wrong, but you also have to admit that something is wrong. And that's a very difficult thing because we live in a world which wants us to be perfect and think that if we are not perfect, it means we are just weak. So you have to admit it and say it loud, something is wrong, that's okay. Then you have to understand which cable is broken, that's difficult too, and then how to fix it. For me, it was long, it was a long journey, it, it is right now, and it was scary, I was very scared. But at the end, it took me to my real life, to my happiness. And I just think that everyone deserves that. Thank you.